But what is a forest? What is a forest? Let's understand that more in detail. Okay, yeah. right. So now, so to understand the forest concept properly, right, we need to understand something known as schema. Okay, what is active memory schema? Let's understand that. Okay, the schema defines uh, the structure of Active Directory. Now, what do I mean by saying structure of Active Directory, right? Like Active Directory has got a certain structure. Wait, why is it saying update? So close this. Okay. Active Directory has got a certain structure, right? When we say Active Directory has got a certain structure, meaning we just discuss about the root domain and the child domain structure, isn't it? Now, not only that, if I click on users and if I right click this user, and if I click on properties, right? What you see here are the attributes of this user object. So user, uh, Michael, this, I'm sorry, can this, I just, uh, yeah, please uh, understand. Just, just can I repeat it? Yeah. Yeah. The user is known as an object. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are the attributes of that object. What you see here are the attributes. Yeah. Meaning you as a person is classified as you know a male and then when you go for your passport and everything they say okay he's got a he's got black color or he's white or fair or he's got this mole or whatever that's an attribute isn't it yeah yeah so what you have is a user is an object and these are the attributes these are the attributes address account profile telephone organization these are the attributes right so the department if i put in a department let's say hr so this becomes your attribute Got it. So what you have is two things. You have an object and its attributes. And the type of the object is user. Please understand the type of the object is user. And there are many types of objects. You have security groups. You know, you might have OUs as a type of an object. You might have computers as a type of an object. So what is activity all about? It's all about objects and their attributes, isn't it? And there are different types of objects. You have computer objects, you have OU objects. And if I right click on an OU and if I click on properties, are the attributes the same as user or are they different? They're different. They are different, isn't it? So different object types will have different attributes. Now the question right. is these attributes have to be defined somewhere. Like for example, you create a user and after you create that user, what attributes that user will have, right? You don't define that, isn't it? It has to pick up that information from somewhere. Yeah. We never say that, oh, the user will have department, will have telephone number. We never say that, you know, but it has to be stored somewhere. So the location where the definition, so let me make a note of this. So the location where the definition of objects and attributes, different types of objects and attributes is stored is known as a schema. The schema contains the definition of objects and attributes. Right. So let's see, you know, so the fact that a user can be created and what attributes a user will have that is stored in the schema. The fact that a group can be created and what all attributes a group can have that is stored in the schema. So let me show you that. I'm going to go to REG SVR. Now, before I even get to the schema, you know, the schema is a hidden console. So what I need to do is I need to first register one DLL and then it's going to be activated. GMT.DLL. Okay, fine. So REGSVR32 space SCHMGMT.DLL. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to access DLL. I'm just going to you know, show you something. I do an MMC, Microsoft Management Console, through which I can add different consoles, which are not shown up normally. Add remote snap in. And if you notice, you know, in this list, there's nothing which says activity schema. But once I do right. the registration of the DLL, it will show up over here. So I'll cancel this okay. and go to run. So we can register the DLL and then again check yeah. whether it is showing here. Yes, yes, yes. SPR32 space SCHMM GMT dot DLL. Okay, so it says DLL registration succeeded. I click on OK to that. 
And now when I click on file, add remote snap in. And here I can select active directory schema. I click yeah. on add, I click on okay to this. And I maximize the screen. So here I have the schema. So here I've got active directory schema and I've got two things. I've got classes and attributes. In fact, classes means user is a category is known as one class. Group is a category is known as one class. OU is a category is known as one class. So there are different classes of objects. So OU is one class. Uh, computer is another class. So, you know, the different classes. So for example, if I type U, I will see the user class defined over here. If I type uh, OU, for example, I will see the organizational unit class defined over here. If I type group, I will see the group class defined over here. And I will also see the attributes of these. So if I double click, I will see the attributes and the attributes are stored in a different uh, container, right? If you down below, if you see attributes, but then it also shows you the attributes here also. This is what you right click on properties. And if you see the, all, all the attributes, this is what you see actually. So you don't really modify the schema normally, you, you, but you need to know that there's something like this like, that exists very rarely. Okay you as an admin would be modifying the schema. It is mostly applications that will modify the schema. Like for example, if you're installing Exchange, so uh, what Exchange has to do, it has to add more attributes to the object, to users. So you will see Exchange mailbox as an attribute coming up in user properties. So Exchange will modify the schema or SQL will modify the schema or SCCM will modify the schema. You normally would not modify the schema. Okay. Okay. Now, why are we discussing the schema? Why have we discussed the schema? And there is a reason for it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. The reason why we discuss the schema is right. We were discussing the forest concept, right? Okay. Now let me just uh, go back to this. So this is my root domain, right? Test.com. Right. And uh, yeah, and now you have to understand at the moment you, this domain that I create, right? And then under this, I will have DC1, DC2, and probably under this, I'll have another child branch.test.com. And let's say I have another DC3, DC4. Now you need to understand that, that the schema is common for everyone. Okay. Every DC has the same copy of the schema. It is like the DNA. It's like the DNA of Active Directory. Okay. So every DC will have the same copy of the schema. It cannot be different. Yeah. Say that you were saying something. Yeah. The, there cannot be multiple schemas. There'll be only one. Yes. Schema. yes. Okay. There'll be only one schema, isn't it? Meaning what I'm saying is if you create a user over here, it should not be that, isn't it? It should be the same. It should be the same thing everywhere. So every DC has the same copy of the schema, exactly the same copy of the schema. Okay. Now. What you also need to understand over here is this, that when you create this domain test.com conceptually, the forest is also created by the name of test.com. And what is a forest? A forest is nothing but a collection of domain trees. And that is what normally a forest is, isn't it? A forest is a yeah. collection of trees, correct? Collection of trees. Okay. Yeah, it's a collection of trees. So that means I can build up a new domain tree. I can build up a new domain tree. Let's say this is test.com and let us say this is examiner.com, for example. I can build up a new domain tree, okay? And when I'm building up a new domain tree, maybe they belong to the same organization. Maybe mm -hmm. these two are a part of the same organization. So I can see that, please make this a part of an existing forest or i can say no this is a new venture and i don't want these people to be knowing each other or whatever these are two separate organizations so i can say sorry uh, no i want to have my own forest and my own forest becomes name becomes exam okay so now we are talking about multiple forests we can say that yes so this becomes actually multiple forests. This becomes one forest. This becomes another forest. It become two separate forests. Or as I said, what I could do is I can say that exam.com should be a part of an existing forest by the name of test.com. So it's got benefit. I'll tell you what is the benefit. The moment I make this a part of an existing forest that is test.com, 
one of the benefits I get is if there is a domain control over here or multiple domain controllers over here, right? They will also share the same schema as test.com. They will have the same schema. Because the schema is the same when it comes to the first forest that was created. Ha, ah, so what you have to understand is that one forest is equal to schema. one copy of the schema. That is the conclusion. Yeah. Okay. So if this is a part of an existing forest, that means there's only one forest, right? So that means the schema will be the same. That means if you're installing exchange, for example, and exchange will modify the schema, those schema modifications will go here. Those schema modifications will go here. They will go here also, and they will go here also, and they will go here also, everywhere. So you have to modify the schema only once. You have to exchange will have to modify the schema only one DC. It will replicate to all of the DCs in the forest. If suppose this was a separate forest, yeah. you know, if they suppose this was a separate forest and then you said, yaar, um, ye to dono same companies hai. right? So let us modify the schema here and then let us also modify the schema over here. There's not going to be automatic sync between the two. You'll have to modify the schema two times. Yes. Right. Okay. So that yeah. is one benefit of having domain trees. These are two domain trees. This is domain tree one. This is domain tree two. Uh, the one, one benefit of having domain trees in the same forest is that uh, they will share, they will have a common schema. schema. Right? Okay.